we can see that this is actually like a really nice representation of the point cloud we can see like all the details that we get in our point cloud Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in this point cloud tutorial. In this video here, we're going to create our own point clouds with our own depth images that we capture from our own camera. So we're going to load in the color images and then we'll use deep learning and third vision to actually like get the depth images. And then we can use those together with the own 3D library uh, as you saw in the, in the last video. So make sure to check that, that one out um, as well, where we're actually like just using color images and depth images to create point clouds in open 3D library. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here. You can join the channel, share us about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel here for a small monthly fee, and everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. And also, if you have some problems or, uh, with your own projects and stuff like that, I can also provide help to you if you're a member of the channel. So thank you guys. So let's just jump straight into the Jupyter Notebook here, where we're actually going to create our own point clouds from our own images. From our own camera which is really nice and the only thing where we're going to do is actually like generate the images and then go into open 3 d library here and then just pass it into the functions and we create our um we create our actual like point cloud so first of all here we're just going to import a module so we're going to use open 3 d um, library numpy matplotlib to plot some of the images and also open cv and then we're just going to set this up here for our uh, this open 3 d master uh, we need to have this file open 3d tutorial so we can actually like get this interactive window where we can play around with uh with our point clouds first of all we're just going to load our images or like load our modules here then down here we're actually like going to create our actual like color images and depth images as i'm going to show you in a second how we can actually like do that in our own python script how we can read in our images and then how we can convert those to color images and depth images that we can then read in here and then create a point cloud from color and depth image we just pass it in here and then we can actually like create our point cloud so in one of the other tutorials we used deep learning tracks like be able to create depth maps with a monocolor camera so let's say we only have one camera we can't have any information about the depth in the image but by only using like standard computer vision techniques but if we have two cameras we can use stereo vision to actually like generate a depth map but this would here if you only have one camera we can actually like use deep learning to estimate a depth map so we won't go into details with any of any of the code in this file here if you want to know like what is going on how can we actually like use deep learning together with OpenCV and so on make sure to check that video out here on the channel where we're talking about like monocle depth estimation uh, with deep learning so basically here we just have a model uh, that we just load in with the dnn module from OpenCV and then we can actually just take in our image read our image from OpenCV pass that image through our model we will get an output which is the actual like depth map and then we're just going to store the color image and also the depth map for the colors corresponding uh, color image we just store those uh, images and then we can load them in um, into open 3d library so here we're actually just going to write out the, those images so we have our path here and this is the exact same path where our Jupyter notebook is currently open in so we can actually just load in those images uh, by taking like the color image and the depth image as we're going to see um, in the Jupyter Notebook, we're just writing out our color image and also our output, which is our depth map in this example. So if we just run the code here, we will like, like open up a window and when we hit escape on our keyboard, it will then take that image, uh, generate our actual like uh, depth map, and then we will then we can actually like write them out. It will store it in the directory and we can load it in with our Jupyter Notebook. here hit escape and we will now get the depth map here where we can see all the white pixels here in the foreground is the closer that we are to the camera the brighter the pixels are and the further we are away like we can see we get all these black pixels in the background we see the chair here is a bit darker a bit lighter gray than it's than it compared to like the tv in the background so this is a really nice estimation of the depth by only using deep learning and a monocular camera so now we're going to jump back into the Jupyter Notebook where we're just going to read in the color image and also the depth image and we can actually just re remove this one up here. Then we're just going here RGB D image. We're going to create this class or like this object where we're just going to create it from our color and our depth and then we can later on transform that into our point cloud. Uh, so here we're just going to run this block of code. We can see that we have this color image and depth image with these dimensions and we only have one channels. Then we can plot the images where, where the first one will be the grayscale image and then we'll also have the corresponding depth image over here to the to the right so these are the images that we're actually like going to pass into the function uh, or like the methods that will create our point cloud for us but first of all before we can actually like create our point clouds 
we need we need some way how we can relate our environment with the camera that we have used and in this example that uh, or like in that case we need to know the camera intrinsic parameters and for this example here first of all we're just going to use the built-in from the prime sense camera there's not a camera that i've used but it's just like some kind of like default uh, intrinsic parameters we can use that see the results that we'll get we'll not get like exact measures or like exact um, like length or like depth in our point cloud but we can actually like visualize what is going on and then later in this video here i'm going to show you how we can actually like calibrate our own camera to get our own intrinsic parameters and then pass them into this one here and create the our point cloud with our own images and our own intrinsic parameters of the camera so we have the exact measure um, of our of our environment and then we actually like predict that down into our point cloud so now we just have these uh, parameters here we just run the plot of code so we have our camera intrinsic parameters now we can just create our point cloud so we have our pcd we have this point cloud generated from rgbd image we just pass in our rgbd image which is our grayscale image and our depth image and then we've also passed in the camera intrinsic parameters when we have done that we have actually created our point cloud First of all, we need to transform our point clouds because it will be uh, upside down. So we need to flip it with this transformation. And then we can just use this draw geometry tracks like draw our um, point cloud and see what is going on. So if we run this block of code, we can actually, we will actually like create our point cloud and we will visualize it here uh, in our point cloud. We can zoom in and out. We can see that this is actually like a really nice representation of the point cloud. We can see like all the details that we get in our point cloud. We miss some of the background uh, because of the estimation like it couldn't just estimate those values in the background but we see here from the side that it is actually like really nice really nice estimations of the depth here when we're just taking like these default parameters it will we will have better results if we act like calibrate our own camera use the intrinsic parameters for our camera but this is a really nice result we get this really cool point cloud we can see like all the details here like in the shoulder in the face in the foreground like there's a really good difference between like the foreground and the background and also like the levels in the image here so this is actually a really nice point cloud that we just created from using a monocular camera and passing it through a, a neural network using the camera's intrinsic parameters and then we just use this own 3 d library to do the rest for us so now we can actually go in calibrate our cameras and then we can get the intrinsic parameters uh, for the camera that we created our color map and our depth image from so we'll just go into visual studio code here again and this is the exact same code as i have in our calibration videos here on the channel so again we won't go into any details of these lines of code if you want to know what is going on step by step make sure to check those videos out i have videos about like almost everything inside like computer vision camera calibration and stereo vision and so on mm. so we won't go into details this is just like um our calibration script we just run the script and it will calibrate our cameras we can store our camera extrinsic parameters, save them in a file, and then we can load them into om 3 d uh, or the om 3 d library. And then we can use those to actually like create our point cloud with our own images and our own extrinsic parameters. So first of all here, I'm just going to show you the calibration images that we're going to use. So I just took these, these images here again with the script that I provided on my GitHub. So everything will be in the description here on my GitHub. You can just go into my GitHub, take the code, copy paste it generate your own images for your own project and you can just run the python script and it will do um, everything for you and you can just follow along with this video so we have these calibration images that we're going to use and then we're just going to calibrate a monocular camera then down here we will actually like get this uh, new camera matrix here from this function get optimal camera matrix after we have calibrated our camera then we just store these intrinsic parameters here in this camera intrinsic xml file that we are then going to load into our Jupyter Notebook and then we use those camera intrinsic parameters to actually like generate our point clouds um, with the Open3D library. So if I run this block code here, it will just calibrate our images. We can see that it loads in, detects the corners of the chessboard, it does all the, all the things here and then we just save the parameters in our XML file which will be stored over here to our left. So we have our camera intrinsic parameters. So these are the intrinsic parameters. We have the focal length, optical center um, and so on in our intrinsic parameters. We can load them into our Jupyter Notebook now. So here we just have the path for our camera intrinsic file that I just showed you. So we have our camera intrinsic parameters in our XML file. And then we're just going to read them in here from uh, or like with OMCV. We're just going to set our camera intrinsic parameters you know, or like our uh, value, uh, variable here for our camera intrinsic uh, parameters. Set it equal to get node. And then we just go in here and get the intrinsic parameters dot matrix. We want to get our intrinsic parameters as a matrix. Then we can print it out here just to actually like verify that we get the correct uh, camera intrinsic matrix. 
So here we can see the focal length and then we can also see the optical center, which is exactly the same as we saw in the files and also in the Python script in Visual Studio Code. So down here we can set the intrinsic camera parameters here in this pinhole camera intrinsic uh, class. So we go inside oh, the O3D, camera, pinhole, camera intrinsic, which is the width, the height, and then we just set the focal length and also the optical center for our intrinsic camera parameters. So when we run this here, we will just set the intrinsic parameters in Open3D library. Up here, we just got them in, in this variable. Now we actually like, create this class with Open3D for like our pinhole camera model. We can see that these X results here are exactly the same because we've just converted it from this NumPy array to an actual like optics here that we can use um, inside of Open3D library. So now we can generate the point cloud or like create the point cloud here from our images and also from our camera intrinsic parameters. We're just going to do the exact same thing again. We just pass in our RGBD image and then the camera intrinsic parameters uh, that we just load in from OpenCV. We're going to transform or like flip our point cloud um, upside down again. And then we just draw our geometries, visualize our point cloud. So when we run this blog code here, we will now see our point cloud here again. But this time here, our point cloud is now generated with our intrinsic parameters instead of just the default intrinsic parameters for some other camera here in Open3D, uh, in the Open3D library. So these results here in a point cloud would actually like be more accurate uh, and more precise because all the parameters, all the images, both the depth that has been estimated with our camera, everything is, is, is the exact, exact values that we need to pass in. So we're not using any default values or anything like that. We're using our own camera to generate this point cloud um, as we can see here on the screen. So again, we get all the nice details here. We just get more precision and like more accuracy in the points actually like relative to, uh, to the environment that we created the, the point cloud from. So we can see we get all these nice levels here again. We actually get a bit more or like a bit better uh, information down here at the bottom. We also get a bit more texture or like a bit more levels up here in the head. But again, this is just a really nice point cloud that we can use for a lot of different kind of things. Again, I'm just using a really standard budget webcam to actually like get these point clouds. So this is a good result. These are good results compared to like the camera and stuff like that. So it just shows like what we can do with camera calibration, computer vision, and using this really nice and cool library uh, from Open3D. So we can do, do a lot of different kind of things here, um, as we can see. We can actually also as actually compare these point clouds with the point cloud that we, that we can actually create from OMSV. So I also have another video about that if you haven't already seen that. Uh, that one where we're actually creating our point clouds directly from OpenCV. Then we just store all the points in a PLY file. And then we can actually just load those files into Open3D here as well. So in the other examples, we got the images from OpenCV. We created a point cloud in Open3D. But now we have done everything in OpenCV and then we can actually like see uh, how it works out compared to Open3D. So I'm going to run this block of code and we can see we get some other, other results here. We will get a lot of differences here and the results will not be as good uh, compared to OMCV. <clears throat> but like if we zoom in here, we can see that we get a bit more, uh, like a bit more levels. We get more background here with us, but we're losing information about like the head here, as we can see, unless we zoom out and then it just looks really weird because like it acts like sees our background here as the foreground. So it tries to like generate this bubble here around the face. So it just, it kind of just messes up everything because there's the mission of of the depth map is is it's just way way worse when we're generating it in OpenCV because it just handles it um, in another way. Sometimes we could get better results in OpenCV also if we did some post processing before we actually like just exported that point cloud or we can actually like just do ex uh, like post processing here so we get rid of some of these values that are just messing up our whole point clouds. Also, when we're generating it in OpenCV, we're actually like downscaling our image before we're actually like creating our point clouds, and that is not necessary to actually like do here in uh, in Open3D. So with Open3D here, we only need our color images, depth images, our camera intrinsic parameters. I have videos about all of it. You can just combine it, go into my GitHub, copy paste all of it, and just use your own images, use your own point clouds, and you can just play around with them by just running these Python scripts. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. So again, I've mentioned this computer vision tutorial several times throughout this video uh, because we have a lot of videos in that tutorial where we talk about 
everything from basic image operations, camera calibration, stereo revision, point clouds, you name it. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here or else on the scene next video, guys. Bye for now.